Well, all right. Are you having trouble keeping little animals, cats, uh, squirrels, this and that, out of your garden? Well, let me show you how I'm fixing that problem for myself. <laughs> trouble and I've talked about it before in videos. Uh, last year I had squirrels that uh, tore up my tomato plants. I've had uh, groundhogs get in and eat things out of my garden. I've had uh, you know just all kinds of problems. Raccoons come in and get my sweet corn. So this year putting up an electric fence. I don't I hope you can see the wire here. I've got it on my hand. I've got the wire up around my garden already. Now I want to say before anybody gets excited because I, I just know what's first in a lot of people's minds no an electric fence does is not going to injure anything or anybody it won't set your house on fire it won't uh, it won't hurt your pets or your small children or your spouse so you don't have to worry about that if something touches it it'll jolt them they'll know it but it won't cause any any damage other than that. They'll be fine, everybody will be good. Now, I'm just explaining just a little bit how one works. I don't want to get too complicated. Now this is the charger I bought now. It was not the smallest one they sold, but it was next to the smallest one. And you got two terminals. This is the, the ground terminal. Now what you all do is I'll pound a piece of uh, uh, ground rod into the ground. I've got some rebar around here that I'll use a little piece of that. And then attach a wire here and attach it to the rebar. And then this terminal, and they just unscrew and you stick the wire in from the bottom. It's real simple. This terminal, I'll hook a wire to it and hook it right to the fence wire itself. Okay? So then what happens is when an animal comes up, and what, an animal, when they see something new, you know, they, they explore it a little bit before they jump in. So what will they do? They'll touch their nose on it to see what it is. And then that's it. That zaps them. Their feet are on the ground, so that completes the circuit. The electricity in the fence will go from that animal's nose to the ground. And that's all it's going to take. It's just going to convince him that isn't a place he wants to be. So won't hurt him, you know, won't send him to the vet or anything like that, but he'll go away and he'll stay away as long as that fence is going. Now, one thing you have to understand about an electric fence is you have to keep your grass down. If you've got a lot of green grass or big weeds that are touching the fence, then that'll make a circuit too and it'll drain power away from the fence. And it can get to the point where the fence isn't working at all. Now, I know this one it said it had an uh, average fence and it showed some taller grass in there and then it had a, a clean surface you know where all the grass was real nice and short well it said that, that it would do i think three miles of fence and of course going around my gardens not a mile you know so it's it's a sixteenth of an acre so if that, I don't know. I haven't measured it out and have no idea, but but it's plenty, okay? And you don't need it bigger than that, probably. Now, they come in all kinds of sizes. You can even buy them that are solar. They have a battery inside them, and then they have a solar panel on top. All right. They have a solar panel on top. So what it does is, you know, collect sun during the daylight, and then it'll continue to work. So those are good too. So, and for fence posts, now there's all kinds of them. They're, they make them that are plastic, they make them that are metal, a couple different styles. But I just used a wood post, and this is just a tube of two. I angled it on the end so I could drive it in the ground. 
and then I got these inexpensive uh, screw-in insulators and you just screw it in and it's simple to do simple to use and I got to tell you I put this thing up and all I've got to do is mount the the box and run some wire put in the ground strap that won't take very long but I've got less than an hour in this and I had to take some 2 by 2 that I had in my garage and cut them all down cut the angles on the ends and stuff like that and then go around and start hammering things in and putting in insulators so it really doesn't take very long to put up and what I'll do is mount this probably on a post next to the garden and run my wires so my ground rods pretty close to the garden and then I'll run an extension cord to it okay now it's no big deal when you're gonna go work in your garden to unplug it just unplug the extension cord you're fine and then come fall I'll take the box inside my garage put it away for the winter so that's really as complicated as it is it's really not expensive compared to other things you could put around your garden uh, I spent I think $75 maybe and this should take care of all my little animal problems so I've had them before and I used to live out in the country now I'm living in town but uh, they work pretty good and they're pretty easy to handle easy to work with so that's the extent of it I can't think of anything else I need to tell you about it but it's just I've, I've tried two or three things I've had problems with animals in the garden and I see a lot of comments a lot of people say oh well you can use predator scents and this and that well I haven't found anything else that worked so it was a cross between I was going to get one of these little electronic deals that catches motion and then it sends out some some sounds or some you know eh, I know this works so It'll work on everything from the neighbor's cat that wants to dig up your strawberry bed or where you've planted your carrots so he can do his business to that raccoon that's going to steal your sweet corn to the groundhog who's going to come eat up half of your garden. So, you know, my, my opinion here is, like I say, it, it's non-lethal. It's not going to hurt anybody. If kids get into it, they won't do it twice probably, you know but it'll just it'll keep them out of the garden and it'll keep they'll be they'll be careful around it more so the whole that's the whole deal i want to eat the sweet corn myself not feed it to the raccoons so you all have a quality day and if you're having that problem this is something you might look into all right thank you